All right, this is fourth grade, module three, lesson 38. And in this lesson, we are going to continue transitioning from that area model for par partial products method uh, to the standard algorithm. In this lesson, we really kind of hit it home. Uh, teachers, it's going to be up to you to continue practicing this with your students. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how much practice they're going to get in future modules. So this, mod this lesson, we finally hit that standard algorithm. And uh, so let's get going on it. So we're going to start from that two partial products method and moving our way towards that standard algorithm. Uh, remember, teachers, if your students are really struggling with the two partial products method, go ahead and let your students split that up and make it a four partial products method. And that's perfectly fine at this point. Uh, so the idea is first we're going to find the area of this rectangle which is 6 times 43, so that's really 6 43's. And then we're going to find the area of this rectangle, which is 20 times 43, or 20 43's. So now, when we do that, when we think of that, it's going to be 6 times 43. So down here on scratch paper, we're going to do 6 times 43. And so that's going to be 258. And then we have 20 times 43, or 20 43s. And so the way I like to think of it is I like to think of it as 43 times 2, as in 2 tens. So that means we could just simply multiply by 2. So 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, and that's 86 tens, which translates to 860. So 20 times 43 is 860, and when we add those two partial products, we get 1,118. Teachers, keep in mind, if your students are struggling with this two partial products method, go ahead and let them decompose that 43 into 40 and 3, and then they can solve it by using four partial products. Just more practice of the same, only this time they've kind of removed some of our scaffolding. So this is 50 and 4, and this is 67. So we know that our distributive property is going to be 4 times 67, and then it's going to be 50 times 67, and they did not leave me a lot of space to write my little numbers here. So 4 times 67, and that's going to be over here. So we know that we're going to do 4 times 67, and then we're going to do 50 times 67. And so scratch paper down here, 67 times 4, because that's the first thing we're going to do. And that's 28, carry the 2. 24, 25, 26, 26. So 268 goes right here. 268. And now we're going to multiply the 50 times 67. And I like to do 67 times 5 tens. So that's going to be, let's see, 5 times 7 is 35. And then 5 times 6 is 30, plus 3 is 33. So that's 335, but it's really 335 tens. So I need to add a zero, because that makes it 3,350. Uh, 3, so that goes right here, 3,350. So now we add, and when we add, we get 8, 11, carry the 1, 6, 3. So we get 3,618. So parents and teachers, you'll notice this isn't really the standard algorithm quite yet because um, while it gives us these same two things right here, all this scratch work in the standard algorithm is, it goes away. We don't actually have all that extra work. Um, so we're not quite there yet um, in this lesson. So it says solve the, using the multiplication algorithm. So I'm going to really try to show you what this is going to look like using that standard algorithm. And we, But we are going to begin with a little bit of scaffolding here. We're going to say, well, that's 6 times 86. And then we've got 
50 times 86. Um, so now, let's get going on this. So we have 6 times 86, all right? So 6 times 86. But first, I'm going to do 6 times 6. So that's 36. So we're going to put the 6 in the 1s column, and we're going to carry the 3 into the 10s column because that's 36. So we ha that means we have three tens. So you can see 3 in the 10s column, 6 in the 1s column. Now we have 6 1s times 8 tens. So that's going to give us 48 tens plus the 3 tens that we already have in the column. So that gives us 51 tens. And really, if you think about it, 51 tens is 510. But this 6 is already sitting there, so that 6 kind of goes right on top of that 0. That's kind of what's happening there. So we just did that first set of partial products. So now let's do the second set of partial products. And, and this 5 isn't really a 5. It's really 50, or 5 tens. So we're going to think of it as 5 tens. And we know that if we multiply something by tens, we know that that is going to end in a 0. It's going to end in a 0. That's the whole point of multiplying by tens. So we know it's going to end in a 0. So let's go back. So now we're going to think of this as 5 tens times 6 ones. So 5 tens times 6 ones is 30 tens. Well, 30 tens, I can cross this off, 30 tens is 3 hundreds. So I'm going to put the carry the 3 into the hundreds column, and we're going to put a 0 in the tens column, because if you think about it, 30 tens means all 30 of these are going to be cashed in to equal 3 hundreds, and we're going to have no tens left over. And then lastly, we have 5 tens times 8 tens, so that's going to be 40 tens. Um, no, I'm sorry, 40 hundreds, because 5 tens times 8 tens equals 40 hundreds. And plus, we already had these three hundreds right here. So that gives us 43 hundreds. And now we're ready to add. So we get in our ones place, six and zero, that gives us six. In our tens place, one and zero gives us one. In our hundreds place, five and three gives us eight. And in the thousands place, that just gives us a four. So the answer is 4,800. 16. One last one. Now, parents and teachers, at this point, let your students choose whether they want to do the four part pr partial products method, the two partial products method, or if they really want to try and do that standard algorithm. This is absolutely fine. Uh, parents, it's not going to hurt your kids no matter what method you use. Let let them choose what method they want, and if they still need help, go ahead and teach them the standard algorithm that you were taught back in the 70s. And, you know, really quickly, if you think about that standard algorithm that you were taught in the 70s, it's totally fine. That concept is, hmm, 8 times 9 is 72, so we're going to put the 72. 8 times 7 is 56, plus 7 is 63. And then we all put a zero, and, and back in the day, we didn't really know why we were putting a zero, but we did. And then we multiplied 6 times 8 is 54, so I'm going to cross that off and make it a 5, 54. And then we had 6 times 7 is 42, plus the 5 is 47. And then when we add, you get 2, 7, 3, carry the 1, 5, so you get 5,372. So if you want, you are absolutely welcome to teach your students this standard algorithm. Um, we really want them to cut it, that standard algorithm to be learned from a position of knowing that number sense and understanding that number sense. You know what I'm going to do real quick? I think I'm going to just show it using the area model. Why? Because I'm going to be a rebel. So we've got 60 and 8, 70 and 9, and we're going to do, oh, that's 560, that's 72. That's 4,200, and then this is 540. And if we want, uh, we can add each row together. So 
560 plus 72 gives us, let's see, 2, 3, 632. And then we can add this row together, and that's way easier to add. And that gives us 4,740. It's a little tricky because now my numbers aren't exactly stacked up. 2 and 0 gives me 2. 3 and 4 gives me 7. 6 and 7 gives me 13. Carry the 1. And then the 1 and the 4 gives me the 5. So look at that, 5,372. Uh, the standard algorithm, whether you do it this way or if you use that area model, they both work. Now that wraps up fourth grade module 338 where we are finally sealing the deal and we are learning that standard algorithm. Parents and teachers, please remember, let your students choose which method they want to use, whether it's the four partial products, the two partial products, or the standard algorithm. At this point in the game, it doesn't matter. Just let the students feel successful. Let them get the right answers. Ultimately, they will learn that standard algorithm this year, uh, but we don't have to die on that hill quite yet.